on the corner of Old River Road and Dagobert Street. Also next week, we will be marking the occasion with a Valentine brunch, immediately following the worship service. The Triple M's, better known as the Marthas and the Marys, will provide spaghetti and meatballs and ask all who attend to provide vegetables and toppings for a salad bar. If you are planning on bringing a salad bar item, please make sure that it's washed, cut, and ready to be served. The sign-up sheet, I have it with me. I'll start it up here in the choir and someone can bring it down for the congregation. Also, our vigil of prayer is scheduled for Tuesday, February 17th from 12 noon until 9 o'clock. And I also have that sign-up sheet with me. So if you'd please sign up for a 15-minute slot to come here between 12 noon and 9 p.m. Um, to sit and pray and meditate. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Any more announcements? Isabel? Yes, don't forget to pick up your pasties on Saturday. And I could use help on Friday and Saturday. Do you need a mic? No, I think everybody heard. All right. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm very excited to announce that we're going to have our first forward band practice this coming Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be at 5 o'clock. It's going to last for an hour. Right now, we have uh, Madison's going to be playing clarinet. All of May is playing trumpet. Uh, Chris Fritz is on baritone. Leanne Coker is playing flute, and they'll be joining me for a one-hour practice. Anyone else that plays an instrument, uh, we have a, a lot of an experience in the group, so don't feel embarrassed that you can't play perfect. It'll be lots of fun, and I look forward to practicing every Wednesday from 5 to 6 and playing here at church uh, on occasions, our first one being a month or two down the road. So if you're interested, uh, let me know so I could have music for you, okay? Thanks. Beautiful, Joe. Any more announcements? Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Please wait for the mic. Appreciate it. Please. The, la the lay leader is in church. The lay leader, can you receive this on our behalf, please? Thank you. Any more announcements? Yes, Karen. Rather than seven. Six thirty. Six thirty at the church for administrative council on Tuesday, the tenth. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. Any more announcements? On this beautiful day, my friends, the second Sunday in the month of February, all United Methodist people around the world are celebrating God for the gift of scouts and the scout ministry. So this morning and uh, throughout the worship service, we'll be giving thanks to God for our men and boys who are here celebrating with us the gifts God has given to them. Let us now worship my friends using this beautiful hymn of all time. O oh God, our help in ages past. Would you stand and sing with me the sing 117 of your United Methodist hymnals.
the last stanza. Please be seated. The boys. Please join me in the call to worship. On this Boy Scout Ministry Sunday, we gather to celebrate God's blessing on us. Surely, God is in this place. We come to open ourselves to God's guidance and love. Surely, God is in this place. We come to see more clearly God's presence in our lives. Surely, God is in this place. We come to see God's leading in our works. Surely, God is in this place. We come to pray, praise, and offer ourselves to God anew. Surely, God is in this place. Let us worship. Please, uh, okay. Please join me in um, the invocation prayer. Um, thank you for time with you. you. Time with another presence in the morning. Time for talking and time for walking. Time for caring and time for sharing. Time for working and time for playing. Time for running and time for resting. Time for sharing and time for praying. The time you give us, oh God, help us make most of it. Amen. My friends, with the beauty of holiness, let us rise up and share with one another God's peace. You can simply rise up and say shalom to one another. Shalom, yes. Shalom. Where is that young man? You coming today? You not sure? Shalom. Hey, Bobby. Thank you for disturbing you. <laughs> As you return to your seats, I missed you. <laughs> How is Daddy doing? Okay. Good. Good. Welcome. Thank you. Back home. Good. Wonderful. As you return to your seats, let us with joy and gladness listen to our choir leaders with the anthem, "All Time Religion." The anthem at the choir.
Let's give the choir another hand. You and I know the choir, our choir is second to none in the valley. Would you agree with me? Yes, yes. Thank you so very much, my friends. Thank you, Gordon. This is the moment when we bring to the church the joys of our lives last week. What joys do you share with one another? Yes, Ellie? The, the mic is coming. Um, I have a joy that I took my nursing board and I passed. Wow. Beautiful. We hear so many sad news, sorrowful news. I'm glad that you are willing to share with us one of the good news in this parish. We appreciate that and we all we keep praying for you. All right, Ellie. That is good news. Any more good news? Yes, John? My mom would like to thank everyone for prayers Beautiful. That is good news too, John. Thank you for that good news. Any more good news? Is that ready? Oh. Is that Mary? Yeah. All right, Mary. Great, grand. <laughs> Beautiful. That is indeed good news, Mary. Thank you for sharing it with us. Any more good news? Any joys? Yes, is that Joyce? Gloria. Gloria. Joyce is right here. My joy is Madison yesterday took the SATs. She's in seventh grade, but was selected to take them with the junior and seniors. We pray she does well, even though she has not a lot of, of the work yet. Uh, also, I ask you to pray for Joan Lacey. She needs your prayer. She is not well, and we ask that you keep her in your prayers. Thank you. Joan Lacey. All right, prayer requests. We will do that, Gloria. Thank you. And I know Madison is going to do very well. I really b believe that. Right, Madison? Wonderful. Thank you. I'll be in prayer for you personally. All right, my friends. Any more joys to share with the church? Yes, uh, Betty. Betty Miller. I just want to say how happy I am to be back with my friends and thank them for all their prayers and concerns. Thank you. And wonderful. I, I was itching to say that, to tell the child that Betty is here today after a few weeks. Betty, we are concerned, but we are not worried. We know you are in God's hands and still are. We'll keep praying for you anyway. God is good all the time. Thank you, Betty. And she brought me, guess what she brought me? Banana bread. <laughs> uh, and one of the best. Jane always brings me banana bread, one of the best. And so was Betty. Thank you. I really love it. Yes, Susan? Yes, that is the joyful news. The cows are here. Thank you. Any more joyful news? All right, what about the concerns? Things that we are not so joyful about. Yes, is that Isabel? Yeah. Yes, prayers for Marianne Miller. Uh, she had surgery this week, but she's home, and I understand she's doing okay. All right, we'll keep the prayers going for her. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yes, Diane? Uh, 
prayers for our daughter, Don Perugino. She's going to be operated on on Friday. This coming Friday? Where is that? Uh, the General Hospital, Geisinger? Geisinger. All right, we will pray for them, okay? Let's keep our faith and hope alive. All right, any more concerns? I'm going to cheat and have my own mic back here, but for uh, Pam, uh, mom and dad, they're having some health issues. Yeah, the mom and dad, uh, we are aware of that. I uh, will keep them in our prayers. Uh, all right, Bill. All right. Are we ready to pray? Let us bow down our minds and our hearts to God in prayer. Yes, my friends, there is a bomb in Gilead. In there, there is hope in the land of hopelessness. There is joy for those who feel that they are experiencing very little joy. There is greatness and beauty and love for those for whom illness had been a challenge. And for that we come to remind one another that there is still a God, a God who is beyond everything we know, above every doubt, and cares for each and for all of us. Yes, there is a balm in Gilead. And so we gather today, my friends, knowing that there is hope for all of us. To say thank you to the God who allowed us and encouraged us and carried us this far. As some of us are able to celebrate our birthdays, the days on which we are born. We come today giving thanks for the prayers answered. We are get here, my friends, to rejoice in God because he has been with us in the scout ministry, the ministry of Boy Scouts in our church has been successful and that happened not by our own doing or might or wisdom, but only by the grace of God, who has carried every scout leader, every boy, every man in this group. For that, we are grateful. We give thanks to God, my friends, for opportunities that yet lie ahead of us. That we are not too sure how God is going to carry us. But we do know that God is able, the one who is able to work possibilities out of any 
impossibility is here with us. And for that we are grateful. For the names of men and women who we have on my list here. The names of men, of women, of girls, of boys that you told me about during the week. Some of you called and said you are concerned. Some share with me some of their worries and concerns about their daughters, their sons, their nephews, their nieces, their husbands, their wives. We come to say today to give God all of these requests. Asking that at moments when we are worried, concerned, baffled, not sure of tomorrow, that we can be assured again of God's love, God's kindness, the God who has said to each of us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in good and difficult times, we will learn to trust him and to believe in him anew, knowing that when we are over-worried, over-concerned, that our God is able to carry us through. And for those who are not here now, distant from us, such as our brothers and sisters who we do not know, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Nigeria, in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, in Guinea, those who have been affected by wars and by violence, those affected by the disease. We come to ask a God who cares for all of us and for any, anywhere, we be present in the lives of those that they need most. We have not forgotten ourselves. Those of us bowing before God in this temple of worship, this house of prayer, we know that God has not forgotten us. No, God does come to our rescue. God is listening to each of us, even when we may not be saying a word. No matter where you are, my friends, no matter what our worries and concerns for tomorrow might be, may you be assured that God knows your needs and at his own time, in his own way, in his own fashion, he will provide your needs. We thank God who has brought our boys here today, the scouts, and our God who knows each of them by name, who understands their needs and their future, may be present in the lives of these boys so that when they become grown up and represent us not only here but at Congress, when they become our medical doctors, our lawyers, when they become our teachers, our mayors, our governors, that these boys be know who call them and for whom they live their lives. And for all of us, we close with this prayer which the Lord himself taught us whenever we are concerned about tomorrow, when we are not too sure of the future, simply to raise up our voices and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come.
Please join me for the responsive reading of Psalm 147. To sing praises to our God, and songs of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. My God has outcast up Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord determines the number of his thirst and give to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Who covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow upon the hills. The Lord takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise your God, O Zion. Make peace in your borders, fills you with the finest wheat. The Lord gives snow like wool, scatters hoarfrost like ashes. The Lord sends forth the word and melts them, makes the wind blow and the waters flow. The Lord has not dealt with us with any other nation. They do not know God's audiences. The Old Testament reading this morning is going to be from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. The gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Will you please stand? As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, He got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. 
And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. While standing, let us turn to selection 886 of your United Methodist hymnals. 886. Let us read together from the World Methodist Social Affirmation. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's grace, and trusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace. We confess our sin individual and collective, by silence or action, to the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, through the occupation of people, because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security, by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ to seek up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. While still standing, would you turn with me to Selection 575, Onward Christian Soldiers. Let us sing the first and the last stanzas.
beautiful. Please be seated. Time to serve God and humankind. We have with us the scout, Boy Scouts today. And the scout ministry is a ministry appreciated by the church, especially the United Methodist Church. And that is one of the reasons why we are so happy, my friends, the leaders of the scout ministry, that you are here serving God with us. The essence and the reason for scout ministry basically is to serve God and serve humankind. And today I want to talk to the church, but really focusing my attention on you guys, my friends. And I want you, when you go home today, to think about the concept of serving God and serving the human race, the humankind. I know that is what you do every day, but I want you to begin thinking about it in relation to what Jesus said to those who we are doing everything and anything and rushing him to finish up what he was doing so that they can go back to do the things they do and they enjoy the most. Jesus said, let us do the work of him who sent me while it is day. For night is coming when no one will work. Let us do the works of him who sent me while it is day. For night comes when no one will ever work. Now Jesus was a Hebrew. As far as I know, he was not an American. I wish he were an African. It would have been easier for me to relate to him. But he was a Hebrew. And just about 2,000 years ago, he was speaking to his own group of people, the Hebrews, who thought that doing stuff, especially the things that they enjoyed the most, was what was really essential. The Hebrews believed that you gain heaven because of what you do as a human being. They say you fast, you give, you serve, all to be able to gain heaven. And when Jesus came, they did not want him to do anything except what they understood. And so many days when Jesus will be walking on the Sabbath day, which was Saturday for them. They kept accusing him, you are not really of God. You are not doing the things that God wants you to do. And you know, they were not happy when Jesus told them this, message, this passage. Let us do the works of him who sent me Why it is day. For the night is coming when no one can work. Were they pleased with him? No, because they thought that they, of all people, we are always doing God's work. So how come Jesus is telling them, let us do the works of God while it is day? I believe that what he really meant was just like you and I. We are always comfortable doing the kinds of things we believe in. Yes, for many of us today, there is not enough time. There is time to go to work, time to go to school, time to compute, time to text, right? You have time to text? Yes, all of us have sufficient time. Even when we are driving, people are still texting. The one thing we do not have time to do is honoring God and the kinds of things God really expects of God. We don't have time 
it is always the time that is left over that we give to God. Have you ever heard of that? Left over time is what we give to God. And what I mean by that is when we have placed everything on our agenda for that week, then if there is some time left, that's when we come to the church. That's when we do things that are about God. But my friends, I tell you that just like you and I give the change in the church, meaning that it is after when we pay all of our bills, what is left, if there's anything left, that's what we give to God and the service of God. I know you as young men are going to have a different worldview from the worldview I grew up in. And your worldview and your times, I believe, are the best of times God has given to the human race. The way you spend that time depends wholly and solely on you. It is left with you to use the computer, to use the texting, to use the, the, the Facebook, and whatever you have, and include God in it, so that for you, God is not going to come last. I've seen some of you in this church. I come here when you are here sometimes, and I know how diligent you are. And I'm asking that when you go home tonight, or today, my friends, think seriously of how much time you are able to give to the work of God, the church. And if you are not a Christian, you are a Jew, then I say to you, consider what, how much time you can give to the temple or the synagogue. If you are neither a Jew nor a Christian, you are a Muslim, I say to you, consider how much time you can give to God's work in the mosque, especially work that is there to uplift that which is going to promote God and the people of God around you. How do you do that? Many. There are many, my friends, who need your prayers. Did you hear that? The scouts. There are many people who really need your prayers. God listens to you just as he listens to me. No, you are a child of God just as I am. You don't have to wait to begin the process and the practice of prayer. If we don't learn anything where we are little, we may never be able to do it at all. Everything is teachable and learnable. If you don't do it now, what makes you so sure that you are going to do it later on? The second thing I want to leave you today is service. Serving God is serving the old lady, the disabled guy on your street, who during winter is able, not able to remove his snow. Ask mom and dad if you can take the shovel, go and remove that snow. Is that something too difficult to do? No, but that is service. And that is something that some people who are disabled, who are old, who are living alone cannot do for themselves. So one is prayer, two is service. And thirdly, I want you to live today thinking of where you will commit your life. Where are you going to dedicate yourself? So that in everything and anything you do, you want to include that thing. You don't have to look up to us who at this day and age give the remnant of our time to the church. Yeah, there are many of us who give only what time is left over of our work, of our going to play, of everything. When one hour is left, that's the time we come to church. Don't do that. I know you are able not to be able to do that. Secondly, I want you really to take prayer as something not only for old people. No, any young person, you don't have to have sentences 
Single words mean a lot. God help. God come. Prayers like that. A beautiful prayer. And do you think God listens to you? Yes. God does not simply listen to pastors. Sometimes he does not even listen to pastors as much as he listens to you. And thirdly, commit your lives in such a fashion that God does not receive the remnant. No. Whether it is in giving or in service, always have God have a major part of whatever you do. Because those before us who have done that, those who have given God the time, and whatever they do, always never regret. And so whether it is praying for somebody you don't know or you do know, do not give up praying for anybody. If you have a brother, you have a niece, a nephew, you have whoever is in your family, don't ever give up praying for that person. Is there somebody you think you can pray for? Yes, many. Somebody on your street who needs your service, remove snow, take his letters, or do whatever they cannot do for themselves. When you do what others cannot do for yourselves, you are serving God. My friends, may God bless you. And may he keep you. May you be reminded every day of Jesus' words saying, let us walk while it is day. For night comes when no one will walk. For you, your life is set ahead of you. But the time we have is only for a moment. And let us use part of it for God for God's work, in prayer, in service, in commitment. One day at a time, in God's name we pray. Amen. Let us be willing and ready to give to God a portion of what God has given to us. Please stand.
Yes, Lord, we surrender to you the lives of these boys, the leaders that are encouraging them to do your work and the work of the communities and the world, and the families that they represent. We ask, O oh God, that you bless their lives and bless this offering also that we've brought. May it become a blessing not only to ourselves, but to all in need everywhere. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let us remain standing if we can and turn to sing him 430. O oh Master, let me walk with thee. Let us sing the first and the last stanzas of that hymn. 430. And it's there without a hymn now. Can you give it to her? On the right hand side, in the black. The hymn now. The hymn, the, the hymn now. So we are already done. Okay, that's all right. All right, my friends, shall we hold one another's hands? If you don't mind, uh, hold each other's hands. <laughs> Joey, are you too far away from me? Yeah, Olive May, the pastor is alone. None of us can afford to be alone. So let us hold one another's hands as we receive the benediction. My brothers and sisters, as you celebrate the lives of the scouts, the Boy Scouts today, I send you home asking God to be in your life to celebrate the life of others. In good and difficult times, there are those that need your touch, those who need your prayers, those who need your support. May God guide you, may God bless you as you give your life and service to others in your neighborhoods and across the world. In the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the postlude from our organist.